Hey folks, I'm Demotro, here in my combo classroom, and I've been playing around with numbers a lot recently, as usual, and I want to tell you something kind of fun that I found, that while it's a very simple pattern about numbers, that some may find obvious right as soon as we explain it, it does show some interesting patterns that numbers have with what's known as their proper divisors. Now, the proper divisors of a number are basically the positive factors of that number that don't include itself. So if I were to say, what are the proper divisors of the number 10? Well, normally its factors would include 1, 2, 5, and 10, but we don't include the number itself. So its proper divisors would be 1, 2, and 5. Now, wait, I want to wipe this off, Carlo. Toss me the lab coat. Yeah. I don't, oh, want, I don't want to get my grade negative 2-1 too dirty yet. We got this old burp <laughs> one. We'll do the job. Okay. Now, what we're going to do here is draw a little number line of some positive integers. And here we'll write the positive integer. And above them, what we're going to write is their largest proper divisor. So in the case of one here, it does not have any proper divisors because one is itself. And so we'll leave one off for now and start with two, whose largest proper divisor is the number one. That'll be true for any prime number because a prime number's only positive factors are one and itself. So if we're not including itself, we can put a one for the largest proper divisor of any prime number. Let's go up to 11 to get one more prime in the mix. But some of these other numbers have a larger proper divisor than that. In fact, if you're not a prime number and you're not the number one, but you're a different positive integer, you're guaranteed to have more than a one at one of these spots. The number four, for example, its factors are one, two, and four. So we get two as the largest that isn't itself. With six, the largest would be three. With eight, it's four. With nine here, we have one, three, and nine. So three is there. With 10, we have a five is the largest proper divisor. Now, there's a lot of interesting patterns building here, but the way that we're gonna try and make them especially pop out is by asking not what is the largest proper divisor of a given number, but for one of these numbers, not even looking at its own proper divisor, but what is the sum of the neighboring proper divisors? If I take one of these spots and add up the largest proper divisor on either side, what will I get? And we'll write the answer, I guess, above here, linking some of them. Here for the number three, its neighbors are a one and a two, which add up to three. Here we have four, has its neighbors are a one and a one, add up to two. Two and three add up to five, two, seven, let's see, uh, whoops. <laughs> add up four, nine, Four. Now, there's some interesting patterns emerging on this level of numbers as well. And the first question I want to ask is, when does a number generate itself? Because it happens a lot here. Three had its neighbors add up to three. Five had its neighbors add up to five. Seven had its neighbors add up to seven. And we can notice that for some reason or another, all of these odd numbers from three up generate themselves, but the even numbers don't. Why is that? Well, when I was fiddling around with the numbers and came across that, I was like, huh, I better 
try and algebraically see what exactly is going on when I add the neighbor largest proper divisor of an odd number. Well, what's special about the odd numbers is that, not that they're odd, because we're looking at the neighbors, that both of the neighbors are even. Now, for an even number, here's our even number that we're imagining the factors of. It's gonna have one and would have itself because any positive integer has one and itself as possibilities. And we're not gonna write the itself due to only looking for the proper divisors, the largest that isn't itself. And we may have other pairs of numbers for an even number. It's hard to say how many, but we're guaranteed at least one pair of numbers that multiply into this even number. Two, which is obviously gonna be a factor of any even number being divisible by two, and the number paired up with two, which is the original number there over two because any even number needs to contain half of itself as a factor to be paired up with that two and multiply to itself. And if we're not counting the number itself, half of itself is guaranteed to be the largest proper divisor. To have a larger proper divisor, it would need to be paired up with some number between one and two, which can't be one of the factors, a fractional thing. And so half of any even number is guaranteed to be its largest proper divisor, which is one of the patterns we can see here. One, two, three, four, five, sort of like a staircase going up, but skipping some because it's half of any of the ones that are even. So then what's happening when we add up two of those that are neighboring an odd number? Now let's say we have M is some odd number. Well, its neighbors are M plus one and M minus one. And each of those neighbors, we said, had its largest proper divisor be half of itself. So we'll take half of those as what the neighboring largest proper divisor would be. And we said we're adding them, so we'll put a plus. Now, if we look at what we get here, this is M over two minus one half plus m over two plus one half, that all adds up to m plus one half minus one half. So just m. So anytime we add up the neighbors of an odd number in this fashion, adding their largest proper divisor, we are algebraically guaranteed to get the odd number itself back. And I thought that while that's simple, it's kind of neat just stumbling across that as I was fiddling with numbers. So I thought, are there any other patterns lurking in here? And we do get one other notable trait I'd say, which is that if we ever generate a two on top here, that's only gonna happen in the cases of numbers that are between two primes. And it's only gonna happen when these primes are two apart from each other, which are the ones known as twin primes. It's an open question in number theory whether there's an infinite amount of twin primes or not, and they're heavily investigated. So I found this, you know, while it won't crack the hypothesis, to be a fun little definition of the numbers between the twin primes. That those will be numbers that if we play this game, adding up their neighbor's proper divisors, if and only if you're between twin primes, you'll spit out a two in that process. Now, leave a comment if you can find any other patterns for what happens in between odd numbers which generate themselves, these spots between twin primes which generate the lowest possible one here if we're in this range, which was two, and I mean, debatably, if we had tried to include one with a zero, we could say that added to lower, but I started from here. Two in any case, if and only if we get two, you're between twin primes. What about in between those? Because any other even number is guaranteed to have less than itself come out here, because 
If you're an even number, you're between odd numbers and their largest prime factor is gonna be less than half themselves. And two less than half yourselves added up is less than yourself. So all other even numbers that aren't between twin primes will be more than two that they generate in this game, but less than themselves. So what other patterns are there? I don't know. Leave a comment if you see any. I just wanted to share some of the stuff that goes on in my own little notepads and investigations I do for fun. There's some other really cool patterns that I'm waiting to show you folks in grade negative two because I'm working with programmers and animators and such to make sure I can bring them to life. This was just a casual little bonus one. Our official start to grade negative two will be coming soon. And make sure that you've checked out the grade negative one finale on the main combo class channel. I'll see you folks in the next one because I'll be doing some random little bonus math videos like this throughout this week. And until then, hope you have a good one.